Hello friend, my name is Javed Nihal and today I am going to discuss with you a poem it is called The Sick Rose by William Blake and here comes the poem Now, The Sick Rose is a small poem of two stanzas, each containing four very short lines. The Sick Rose has been written in the gnomic form of poetry. What is gnomic form? What is gnomic poetry? Gnomic poetry consists of statements of traditional wisdom and morality expressed in the form of verse. In fact, the word gnomic is derived from the word gnome which is actually a Greek word meaning proverb so in fact in this poem you will find that lot of uh, wisdom lot of morality has been expressed has been talked about in this poem now this poem may be a short poem but it certainly has very deep meaning as well as multiple interpretation let us first start with the literal meaning of the poem now, the first line O Rose, thou art sick is actually a figurative speech. It has a figurative speech called apostrophe. Now, apostrophe is a direct address to the dead, to the absent, or to the personified object or idea. Here, the poet is making an impassioned address to a rose and says, O Rose, thou art sick. The tone is full of pity. The rose is sick because it has been infested by a worm. Well, in nature we often find that some organism or species come together and form a relationship. You know, they live and coexist very, very happily. Now, this kind of relationship is called symbiotic relationship. Now, but here the association and relationship between the rose and the invisible worm is not symbiotic or of mutual benefit. The worm is an evil in nature and the innocent rose, the simple rose cannot see or realize this. The worm is evil in nature which gets proof from the expression that it flies in the night. At night most living beings prefer to rest and sleep. However, the darkness of night also excites and agitates certain creatures, especially dark and evil forces. The poet uses night to describe the surreptitious, vicious and evil nature of the worm. Now the image and the intent of the worm gets more fully defined from another expression that it carries dark secret love. Now this nocturnal worm not only flies in night but it also carries dark secret love. The use of night and the dark speaks volumes for the evil designs and the intent that the worm carries. Now one night taking advantage of the howling and violent storm, the worm made penetration into the rose's bed. It found out what it was looking for. Now another important thing to bear in the mind is that road is not completely above the blame for this infestation. To a certain extent the rose is also responsible for bringing this upon itself. It was in fact the rose's bed of crimson joy that attracted the worm. This bed of crimson joy was like an open invitation and the worm was impassioned by it. Now here the bed of crimson joy refers to the rose's lust and desire for experience. This parasitic worm with its dark secret love spells doom for the innocent rose. The worm thrives and flourishes eating merrily into the delightful bed of the rose and at the same time making the rose bleed inch by inch. Thus the rose loses its purity its innocence, its beauty and ultimately dies at the hands of the worm. Now, this is the literal meaning of the poem. This poem also has some strong connotations of sexual misadventure. In late 18th century in England, 
more and more women were actually being lured into prostitution sex business and sexual relationship outside marriage their sexual misadventure and lewd and immoral behavior gave rise to different diseases and it was none but those women themselves who were at the receiving end of such deadly diseases now this is a sexual connotation that has been touched in this poem and it can be established through various symbols used in the poem say for example rose now apart from being a flower a rose also represents femininity and the warm with its pronominal adjective his dark secret love become symbol of masculinity a male gender the warm penetrating into the bed of the rose underlines this connotation of sexual misadventure the word crimson also means to turn red with shame and embarrassment the expression crimson joy gives a connotation of lust for sex and the rose's bed of crimson joy denotes both a flower bed and a human one in fact the poem the sick rose can also be taken as an allegory an allegory is a symbolic narration of some abstract ideas it uses symbols to express two coherent and lucid meanings one implied and the other expressed now here the rose stands as a symbolic representation of all things pure innocent and virtuous on the other hand the worm with his dark secret love symbolizes opposite and evil forces destroying purity innocence and virtue the poem reiterates the axiomatic fact that the world of innocence get corrupted and destroyed by the world of experience say for example love gets corrupted and destroyed by selfishness innocence by experience honor by pride and arrogance wealth by extravagance contentment by greed character by immoral behavior chastity by immodesty in fact the rose and the worm represents two opposite forces the rose belongs to the world of innocence and the worm to the world of experience the sick rose and the joyous worm are two opposite forces of life hence the poem the sick rose can also be taken as an allegory now here we come to the end of this poem Thank you very much.